welcome to the webinar. Today we have Matt Caffrey to show you some of his tips on responding to email attacks. Um, before we start, I would just like to let you know that we we'll answer any question that you may have at the end of the webinar. So if you have any questions, just type down in the Q&A section and Matt will cover them at the very end. So hi Matt, thank you so much for taking your time to um, host this webinar. Matt? All right, I'll start. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Matt Caffrey, Solutions Engineer from APAC uh, as part of Barracuda MSP. Let's start this webinar. Thank you. If you haven't already experienced it, email born risks are an existential threat to your users and data. So how do we secure more than just the gateway? Almost every day we hear about new phishing attacks uh, along with ransomware, spam and malware. Here are some examples pulled off uh, the headlines. These threats are a constant worry for small, medium and large organisations across all industries. You can see here that Australians have reported cybercrime activities once every 10 minutes and that ransomware operations are increasingly run like legitimate businesses as they are quite lucrative. Since the marginal cost is zero when spamming or phishing, this attributes to the vast majority of email traffic worldwide. The big change is now how we've moved towards a mass customized or highly targeted attack via email. And you can see that social engineering uh, represents 93% of all email uh, breaches and that was uh, reported by Verizon last year, 2018. In fact, things seem to be getting more complicated and risky over time. This makes sense as our defense is getting better, the adversary exhausts all the low hanging fruit they've, and now they've turned to more sophisticated attacks. In the early days, it was a spray and prey approach, cast that net wide and prey on the large volume of unsophisticated attacks. Regulators uh, started to crack down on computing controls. The bad guys realized that antivirus was doing okay job of, of stopping the run of the mill malware. So they started writing custom zero day attacks that could evade uh, traditional email security. They realized that humans are the weakest link in the defense chain and started launching spear phishing attacks. Sorry, uh, phishing attacks. As phishing attacks use corporate brands, companies found that they lost customer trust and had more trouble engaging customers through email. Ransomware was an innovation that helped criminals easily monetize their activity and continue with that same theme of easy of monetization Attackers started to use social engineering to convince executives to wire transfers or to disclose sensitive, sensitive information. As corporate defenses got better, the bad guys have started phishing executives through unsecured personal accounts. With the rise of unified inboxes, it's not always clear whether an email is from a person or corporate account which helps attackers succeed. So to give you a little bit more context on the threat landscape, let's look at the evolution of our defenses. In the early days, it was simple. Legitimate mail would come across the internet, land on the mail server, get delivered into an inbox, and users would send and receive the message. In early 2000s, Spam and malware started to be sent via email more frequently. Barracuda pioneered the spam firewall, which let legitimate email through, but stopped spam and malware. As threats evolved, we improved the spam firewall, which became the modern email gateway, which included things like DLP uh, and encryption to stop leakage of sens uh, sensitive information. Backup and archiving, which don't actually sit on the gateway, provided important capabilities to recover from accidental deletion and to archive mail for compliance or storage purposes. 
with the rise of zero day threats, threats were new or custom and therefore couldn't be caught by backwards looking signatures. The industry needed a new approach. Sandboxing is a technique that doesn't rely on having uh, seen a specific attack before. It puts the potentially malicious message into a virtual environment to see if anything uh, nefarious comes of it. Both traditional gateway security and advanced threat protection techniques like sandboxing both rely on spotting malicious payloads. These defenses look like a piece of malware, either from a bad attachment or a, a link from a website. Social engineering attacks don't contain any of these attachments or links. They try to trick the user into doing something. To a gateway, a social engineering, business email compromise, or CEO fraud attack looks just like any other piece of email. As if that wasn't bad enough. The bad guys have realized executives frequently access both a personal and, um, and corporate email in a unified mailbox. Think about a mobile device that has an inbox that combines email from corporate and personal accounts. A distracted email, uh, sorry, uh, employee might not even know which account the email had come from. The unsecured personal email account is a soft point into an executive's inbox. And as a result, phishing attacks through the back door can be brutally effective. But the nastiest uh, emerging threat that we see on the rise is an account takeover or ATO. These attacks, uh, the adversary gains uh, login information and uses legitimate email accounts to send and receive mail from within that domain. These emails are, aren't spoofed. They're really from who they say they are from. To make matters worse, internal emails never even cross the gateway. So a gateway solution can't even see the email, much less recognize that it is illegitimate. In the early 2000s, the network security perimeter collapsed. It became more important to secure the data where it lived on the network. And we're at a similar point for email security. Securing the gateway is still necessary, but the threats have moved beyond the gateway, so this is no longer sufficient. Today, inbound mail goes through a number of filters that make up your email security solution. They include checking the reputation of the domains or sender relying on blacklists. These also include content filters, looking for spam and malware, your email security may even use techniques like URL inspection uh, and protection to detect uh, malicious links or heuristic analysis to identify malicious content within the email. ATP features, which are now standard in most email security uh, products, will also do a great job of protecting you against those zero day thre uh, threats. Gateways only see what comes from external senders and have no visibility into internal communication. This makes it impossible for them to do uh, or identify internal attacks launched from compromised accounts within that domain. They rely on static rules designed to identify malicious email. These techniques are not effective against socially engineered attacks that are designed to bypass gateways. They carry no malicious payload, originate from a high reputation uh, sender and uh, use carefully designed impersonation techniques to track, uh, trick the victims. To your security gateway, these look like legitimate mail. So what does an email uh, protection stack look like? It all starts with the mailbox, uh, whether it be uh, on a cloud service you know, in Office 365 or Gmail on-prem or in a hybrid configuration, the defenses are the same. The gateway is as important as ever, so make sure that you have inbound and outbound security deployed, including traditional signatures, uh, defenses, and advanced techniques like sandboxing. Secure yourself against uh, accidental deletion and malicious data loss with uh, encryption and DLP. 
and archive important emails for compliance or storage reasons. On top of that, ensure resiliency with backup to recover from accidental deletion or malicious deletion of that and con uh, continuity service to, services to ensure that critical emails can be sent during outages. To stop attacks that bypass the gateway, artificial intelligence can predict how an email is likely to be from the person it purports to be. And a DMARC standard is useful to make sure that bad actors aren't sending uh, spam and phishing attacks using your domain and therefore brand. Account takeover is an emerging problem, as we had talked about, where legitimate email accounts are often uh, taken uh, over to spread bad things. As the last line of defense email that comes through uh, personal accounts, it is critical to turn your users from a liability into a control. Fish, uh, phishing simulation and training makes your executives more resilient. Finally, Barracuda Forensics and Incident Response automates incident uh, response and provides remediation options to address issues faster and more effectively. Admins can send alerts, quarantine uh, malicious emails and use threat insights for proactive threat detection. In fact, we've built our uh, product portfolio to support that layered approach to security. Barracuda Essentials uh, provides gateway defenses and resilience. Barracuda Sentinel stops brand hijacking and catches social engineering attacks using artificial intelligence. And Barracuda uh, Managed Fish Line provides the last line of defense, training your employees to spot and thwart phishing attacks on unsecured personal accounts. The approach is totally modular, letting you layer defenses in where you need a boost or all four components for the ultimate in protection. Now let's look at our fraud prevention layer, Barracuda Sentinel. Barracuda Sentinel uses artificial intelligence to stop spear phishing attacks without a payload, e.g. a attachment that gateway defenses miss. Sentinel does that by applying machine learning techniques to build a model on what is a good email from a specific user on what should it look like. The artificial Intel, the artificial intelligence uh, has been trained in over 3 million mailboxes and it analyzes 40 components of email using components like send a name and email address or even the time of day it's sent. Unlike rules and uh, policy based approaches, Sentinel is incredibly accurate with a false positive rate of one in 1 million. And that means that important emails, when they're supposed to get through, uh, go through and that spear phishing attacks are stopped in their tracks. Sentinel leverages the standard DMARC, which builds on two previous standards, DKIM and also uh, SPF. So we can stop brand impersonation. The real value behind DMARC is reporting. It helps you understand who's using your domain and by extension your brand. There may be a legitimate third party that's using email on your behalf. For instance, a marketing tool uh, such as MailChimp. This, uh, all of this means better engagement with your customers and the ability to stop brand erosion. Forensics and Incident Response by Barracuda. So how can Barracuda Forensics and Incident Response help? Your users will continue to report incidents as they come in. In addition to that, you can use insights from Forensics and Incident Response to find anomalies in a delivered email and speed up your own investigations. For example, admins can access the visual report that shows where email is coming from, what country it originates from, for if, if the business uh, and their email comes from Australia and they notice that email uh, is also coming from Africa, they can quickly review 
and determine if that email is legitimate. Once the malicious email is identified, admins can use Barracuda to quickly search through their email servers to identify other messages from that same sender or uh, with that same subject line. To search, uh, the search will be returned uh, with all associated emails and users that have received them. This takes only a few seconds and saves a lot of valuable time. Once all malicious emails are identified, admins can create incidents and move to remediation. Remediation is very fast. With a couple of clicks, admins can automatically send alerts to all impact users and quarantine messages directly uh, from that user's inbox. No email defense can protect against every email threat 100% of the time. When email attacks go through forensics and incident response, uh, we can use that to address and clean up those um, mail messages. Admins can send alerts to end users who receive the malicious email. They can also remove and quarantine malicious messages directly from that user's inbox. Users' insights to identify anomalies in delivered email to detect email attacks that have bypassed email security, create new incidents on the, those findings. This is the uh, usually a manually intensive um, task and it can be achieved within a few uh, quick steps to easily uh, use and then uh, ensure that the cleanup is done to a standard every time. We'll just go through a few things here um, that we can you know, start you know, today. Can, um, and these are my tips to you. Uh, you can go through and identify those gaps you know, when we were talking about the, the layered approach in that, in that stack. And then also understand why, um, which we've covered off today, the traditional email gateway security uh, is not sufficient to protect against these uh, ever uh, changing and advanced threats. Uh, we have an email threat scan or ETS, which is an incredible value add, not only for you to have a look at your own uh, tenant, but to leverage um, when you're going to an email, um, uh, a client about their email protection. Uh, it will then produce a report. Um, it only requires you to log in with your 0365 credentials uh, via API, and then it will go to work and then prepare that report for you. Lastly, uh, it would be uh, ideal so we can have a one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, uh, email demo uh, that would be conducted by myself to go through what your individual clients have, and then we can tailor that solution to fit. And then at the end of the day, we've got to secure more than just the gateway. Uh, that's, you know, that's why we leverage um, the APIs within uh, 0365 and Sentinel. So we can detect those uh, advanced threats uh, and those account takeovers um, with inside that tenant. We also, as Barracuda have, uh, Barracuda MSP, we have tools for MSPs um, uh, we have uh, our uh, Barracuda MSP Resources Centre uh, for sales, marketing and business resources to help you grow. Uh, we have uh, csi.barracuda.com which uh, gives you those ATP insights uh, which can you, you can take to your, your customers and, and talk about, look, uh, there's 400,000 um, new types of viruses that we have detected today in the last 24 hours. And we've got our Smarter MSP um, to uh, give you tips and tricks and ideas and there's great blogs on there um, to, to go through and, and give you ideas for your uh, MSP. Um, yeah. I'd also like to say that uh, we here in Australia in APAC um, have a wonderful team. We've got Luke Smith. He's the regional account director of Barracuda MSP APAC got myself and then uh, Beatrice 
uh, as the field marketing manager to assist you with uh, your marketing needs. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I uh, hope that uh, everything is good. Um, and uh, do you have any questions? Cool, thank you, Matt. So time for us to answer some questions. We've got a couple in the queue already. Um, are you ready? Yes. Great, so let me just open this tab. So the first question is from Justin. So he asked, when an alert is sent to the recipient of an email from a compromised account, what address does it come from? Yeah, that would be coming from the recipient uh, that has been uh, jeopardized. So it, uh, it appears from that end user. Great, thank you. Awesome. Cool. Um, next question. Jamie asked, when the DMARC is set to enforcement mode, can we see what services are rejected from that point onward? Yes, yeah, certainly. In the uh, Sentinel uh, DMARC portal, uh, it will give you a list of those um, emails that have been uh, misaligned and uh, where those services are coming from. So, yeah, we can append that at any time uh, moving forward. Great. Thank you, Matt. And we have another question just came in from Jonathan. Cool, so he's asking, if we're hooking this into our Office 365 to cover all mailboxes and distribution groups, how we charge for this? Yeah, so uh, like anything um, in email security, um, it's charged on a uh, per user inside the organization. So therefore any, um, uh, it's only the, the actual active people within that organization, uh, shared mailboxes, distribution groups, uh, not charged for, which is a, a great uh, value uh, to organizations. So you're not having to license um, for those extras with inside the tenant. And that's how MSPs uh, generally work. Um, they charge per um, active person with inside that organization. Cool, thank you, Matt. Great. Um, yeah, I think that's all the questions we have today. So if you guys have any more questions that you can think of, um, just shoot us an email. We send you a follow-up email with our contact details and then our Matt can assist you further with that. And before I let you guys um, go, just want to let you know that Matt will be hosting another one um, next month and he'll go for our RMM to manage workplace. Um, so we recently released a latest feature which is called the um, third party automation management tool. So Matt will go through that. Um, so if you want to learn more about our RMM tool and how it can help you to um, expand your MSP business, stay tuned to the registration link. Well, um, have a lovely week, everyone. Thank you, Matt, and see you all next time. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Speak soon. Bye.